Hello, welcome. I'm Anandi Carol Woolery with Rogers TV. Today we're going to talk about mental health, especially that in youth. And we'll be talking as well about the supports that's needed for the youth, some of which are sorely lacking right now. I'd like to welcome to the studio, Lauren Smith. Thank you so much for joining us, Lauren. My pleasure. Lauren, this is a really difficult story and I applaud your bravery, your courage, and in the couple of minutes that I got to meet you, like face to face and on the phone, that you have a courage and a bravery to that even out of this tragedy you want to help people and i just want to right off the top say i applaud you for that thank you so we're here to talk about grace and grace lindsay mcsweeney um uh, grace is your was your daughter yes and you lost grace very recently yes can you tell us a little bit about uh, about grace um she was 12 years old a straight aid student loved music played guitar, um, just a wonderful person inside and out, tall and beautiful. She, she sounded she sounded like a, a, a beautiful, like I was able to read a bit about her and you told me so much about her. She yeah. sounds she sounds like a joy. And she, 12 years old, you said, yeah. and just on the cusp of being a teenager, a yeah. regular teenager, the, she, she loved her gaming. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Snapchat. Yeah, yeah, yeah she, hanging out with her friends. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then things were not so normal for her. No. Um, how, how was it for her in school? School, uh, there was bullying since she started school. Um, obviously, she was taller and a little bit bigger than most kids. You said kids. she was very tall. Huh? How yeah. tall was she? She was six feet tall. Six feet, wow. Yeah, she was a monster. <laughs> I, would say, I was going to say Amazon. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to go with Amazon, six feet. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And um, the, obviously, the kids bullied her a lot uh, to the point where you know, I'd come to the one school and she's in the corner crying in the schoolyard because nobody wanted to play with her. Um, but yeah, kids gravitated towards her at the same time. So I'm not quite sure what the bullying was exactly about, whether it was just the height or because she was popular and they wanted to be in that friend group um, or if it was a mixture. Um, it kind of jumped back and forth from year to year. Um, but yeah, she um, ended up getting a lot of bullying at the recent school that she had. Kept a lot of it in in the last two years, I guess, because mom would act on it. And um, so I thought everything was going great for her, but yeah. Right, and yeah, because we're the mama bears, right? Exactly. We, we need to protect and, and so she was she was um, sort of keeping that to herself. And, yeah. And, and I, uh, I guess we have to be really clear that the harm that bullying does sometimes yes. we think okay well back in my day we had bullies sticks and stones may break my bones words will never hurt me yeah. but words do hurt and mm -hmm. and uh, uh being ostracized yeah. being gossiped about all of this is part of bullying and oh, it does yeah. have an impact on others so she was internalizing um these bullying these lies from the, from the bullies mm -hmm. and did you see a change in her mental health then during that time? Oh, it, about two years ago, um, I ended up finding a book listing different ways of suicide. And that was the... That was a sign. Yeah, like you, you'd see when she'd have her good days because she'd be full of smiles. And then you'd see when, you know, something just wasn't right. And if she said the words, don't worry about it, I'm fine, then you knew something was up. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's when we started trying to get help for her right. two years ago. Right. So as a parent... It's, this is probably the first time that you're facing it or you realize the severity of it. Yes. And how do you, you said you looked for help. How did you look for help in, in the case um, of Lauren? To start, I ended up going to the school and asking for, you know, the student I called counselors. her Lauren. It's Grace, isn't <laughs> yes. it? Did you ever call her Lauren? No, When no. she was in trouble, but maybe? in our family, our family, we can never get our names right. Okay, so. <laughs> there, but she's, my, she's like my family too, right? We yeah. always called our kids the wrong name. I'm at least two different aunts. Yeah, so how did, you, how did you look for help for Grace? Um, I went to the school, first of all, because growing up, I always had school counselors. And I thought maybe someone a little bit more familiar she'd be able to talk to a little bit more openly. And um, yeah, they don't have any school counselors at the public school um, elementary grades, none. Really? Um, all of the high schools do. And um, w someone from the high school, like one of the counselors will be assigned to a public uh, elementary school, 
By request only. By request only. And that's only six sessions. Right. And so for high school, that starts at age 12, age 13, um, more 13, 13, 14. More 13. So what I'm seeing here is that at age 12 and it's under, not. there are no resources in the school. No. Unless unless you're asking uh, yeah, for it. Yes, exactly. Uh, by, by request. Yeah. So the only other place they can go is like the principal and even her old principal, uh, with the amount of times that she's constantly come in telling her about the bullying, she's actually told maybe it was her fault for tattling on them so much. Mm, I'm like, that's not empathetic. No, no, no. But but they ended up um, requesting a um, child and youth worker. She came down and she was there, I think, for six sessions only. And then after that, um, we ended up talking a little bit more with the, the counselor and she had requested we go to contact Brant. So we did that and we were on the waiting list. Now, because of COVID, it was up to a year, year and a half, two years wait. Um, however, we did get her kind of on an emergency list and we were in within, I think, six months. Okay, so just to circle back, you said you got six sessions yeah. when you were at the, at the school level. Yeah. Why was it like six sessions and, the, and then that's it, huh? Uh, yeah, that was it. That's it, you're just so I, that. I didn't really get an answer from them on that one. Um, mind you, it was the old principal as well, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Now, is there, are there OHIP, are there, does OHIP cover any kind of mental health care? For no, see, young this people? is where, um, with the contact brand, they ended up looking all over the place for help for kids under the age of 13, and there was one place in, in the city. Wow. So we ended up going with them, and OHIP will cover that, but eight sessions, that's all she got. Um, she was on her seventh and her um, her counselor, like she was a wonderful woman, totally changed Grace actually, whereas Grace would get up and come home, go to bed, all smiles. Like she was completely changed. Um, but after the seventh, she was being referred to telehealth. And again, that's a up to three year wait because of COVID. And um, that's just to see if you apply. So we were going to save the last one to kind of prepare her for the next steps. So it's a bit of like of a patchwork. It's a bit of a piecemeal. Yeah. There's not like one provider going with you no. the whole way. No. Um, because when you're with one provider and then you have to switch over, it's almost like being at zero again, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, no, it totally is. Totally yeah. is. Right. And it doesn't help her mental state either. So. Right, and that's and that seems to be a gap for uh, for younger, like I said, thirteen and younger. Mm -hmm. Because, to my understanding, there are resources available. There, there's more robust and more more funding available exactly. for people that that are and older. Oh, cover. That's interesting. Uh, it's it's really sad that uh, we don't uh, recognize the prevalence of mental illnesses at. at in, in people, mm -hmm. because kids are people too. Exactly. People, we, we sometimes think that childhood is all happiness and that people, you know, our kids don't suffer from mental illness, but, but they do. Yeah. And especially with the, with the, as we see the, the increase in bullying, um, on, online bullying yeah. is a thing as well. Um, and I, I'm just really sad and like your story certainly uh, increased awareness for me yeah that the, there is this lack of, of resources yeah. so i know you've been doing more research than i have so after the <laughs> break we will uh we'll come back and we'll talk to lauren more about what resources and what we can do to prevent a tragedy like this happening in your life with your families uh, see you soon Welcome back. Uh, I'm Anandi Carol Willery with Rogers TV, and I'm here in studio with uh, Lauren Smith. We're going to just continue our chat here about mental health uh, with young people and a very special young person, your daughter, Grace McSweeney. Mm -hmm. Uh, we ha before the break, we had sort of touched on sort of the difficulties that uh, Lauren had with with bullying, and do you have do you have some thoughts on on bullying and your and your daughter's experience with that? And I might have some thoughts too because I have children as well. But yeah, can you start us off? Yeah, I know. Um, well, the effects of the bullying um, it, it breaks you down, right? Um, I've seen her go from happy to sad in a matter of no time. Um, it also controls how you can cope. Um, there's only two ways, you know, you, kids either cope by harming themselves or harming others and not having kind of like mental health help breaks, 
it doesn't break that barrier. It doesn't right. allow them to see outside the box where they're still stuck inside. Right. Right. So to, I, I think my, my, my children have been out of school for a, a while now. <laughs> they're sort of in their young 20s. Uh, but when they experienced bullying, it was in the school. Yeah. And sometimes I felt that I didn't get uh, the support. Um, you alluded to that too, yeah. that um, there was a bit of victim blaming as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they could. That was. I still can't believe that, but most of it did happen at school. Um, not so much online. Online, she just pretty much was talking to her friends and whatnot. So we really didn't have that, that uh, come to play. But um, yeah, just the finger pointing and everything else. And and it's hard to blame the bullies, because m most of it's coming out of their mouths. It's not written down on paper. It's not. He said. She said. Or yeah, she exactly. Said, she said, right. So it's yeah. like you know, like where do you go from there? But clearly, you, you watch the kid that's being bullied, you can see the difference. It breaks you down. Yes, yes. Would you say that in the schools, in your experience, because I mean, we, can, we don't know the whole school system, but mm -hmm. sort of in your experience, did you feel that the school dealt effectively with the bullies? You felt there were no. consequences for them? None whatsoever. Um, the one time the uh, old principal I can't remember what she did. Um, oh, she just separated her. So Grace was on one side, the other girl was on the other. That's not gonna really do much in the schoolyard. Thankfully, that one moved away okay. uh, shortly after, but then, you know, there's more to follow, right? Um, but no, they didn't really, didn't really help the situation. Now the newer principal, I have talked to, to him and he's in a bit of a situation too. He's new, doesn't really have that trust with the students. So he's kind of in that boat. Whereas, what do I do, right? But he's been very helpful now, right? Given the fact, um, but yeah, no, they, not much support or help from them in the right, past. Right, So I, I would really like to see that as part of, me, of mental health yeah. and wellness as well, that it's it's not just uh, counseling for, for the person who's going through it, yeah. but you know, I would like to see rectification and education it, on, on bullying and also like a hard line on yeah. that this, this is not okay. Yeah. yeah, and see the funny thing is, is I was looking through her notes today and they actually did have- Was she a, a writer? Whole... You said you're looking through her notes? Yeah. Oh, she's a writer? Oh yeah. gosh, she yeah. even had a typewriter for Christmas. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was looking through her notes at um, her school books and they have a whole thing about bullying. And it's like bullet points, it's, and it, it's just, it, how, how is this not like playing in the back of these kids' minds? That you just learned this and yet you're gonna go out and do that at your own free will. It's, it's shocking. Right, right. Um, now that uh, now that we are, I mean, we are powerless in, in this in this situation mm -hmm. because we can't control we can't control other exactly. people. Um, so we need to, you know, we go out there, we do the best we can, yeah. and as a parent, as a caregiver, we mm -hmm. have to look for the best help that we can. Mm -hmm. And I, so I have I was I was looking after someone. I had to I had someone in my care. And uh, I could tell that they were going through depression. They were very listless, didn't want to go to school and whatnot. And so we went through, we had to contact the family doctor who put, in touch, put us in touch with a, a social worker. And the social worker mm -hmm. interviewed this person in my care first, and then they spoke to me. And um, it was a bit shocking that they said, um, well, you know, do this, do that. You know, they gave me a list of things to do. And the one that sort of shocked me the most was, uh, do you have medications, mm -hmm. prescription or otherwise? And I said, yes, I'm a normal family. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, sh she said, uh, yeah, you need, to, you need to put that under your care. Like mm -hmm. you need to, to lock them up and, and make sure this person in your care does not have access to them. And that was a, a, a bit of a shock to me that something like an everyday thing that you don't mm -hmm. even think about can, can, can cause a lot of harm as well. Um, so just, just to honor uh, mm -hmm. Grace's life and also her death, Grace passed away uh, from an overdose yes. of, of medications. Yes. And uh, that's, I think, uh, part of your message too. Yeah. Yeah. And see, like we had everything under lock and key except that. Yeah. And somehow, I don't know how she found it, but she did. Yeah, yeah. So that's, I think that's another very important message for, for yeah. caregivers and for parents. Oh, definitely. Uh, that um, when you get the instructions from your, from your health care providers, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, all you can do is the, be you know, the best you can. Yeah. And um, 
Laura, um, I keep calling her Lauren. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe she is like in you now <laughs> looking at me. I kind of went kind of woo woo there on that. Uh, Grace's, um, her life, mm -hmm. it's um, the, 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 the tragedy that you and your family had to go through because it's you, your husband, you have a daughter as yeah. well. Um, how do you think Lauren's story and Lauren's circumstances can help others? Um, it could happen. Grace was just a normal kid, right? And it's her story can happen to anybody. It, um, kids nowadays don't don't live the life that we did. It's a lot harder on them. The mental health is there, especially with COVID. And um, it, it's just, I want her story to be out there so that parents, first of all, can understand the severity of the things that are just under their counter or, you know, in their medicine cabinet. Um, th the simplest of things can turn into a tragedy, um, especially with younger kids. They don't know what they're going to take. The first, first thing that they're going to do is take pills, right? Um, so, yeah, the, pretty much just watch your kids. Watch, watch them, pay attention to them, um, because, like I said, she was just a normal kid. And I would have never thought in my wildest dreams that I would be here talking to you about her as she passed at 12. At, at 12 years old yeah. and um, yes so what is it that you say about her that with her her story she can save um, she sacrificed her life to save others she sacrificed her life to save others yeah. and thank you so much thank you so much for no, joining us thank you. Um, Lauren and I will say this that um, I can see what you are doing I can see what your husband is doing as mm -hmm. well that um, you are your whole you're taking up her cause as well Mm -hmm. um, those there are millions, millions of children in this country mm -hmm. that are suffering from from mental illness, yeah. and it comes in all forms. It could be as a result of bullying, it it could be from schools, it it could be any number of yeah. things. But mental health is not it's not a it's not a woke thing. It's mm -hmm. a real thing, yeah. and we owe it to our children to be there for them and. So to our, our government, so to our community. So, so thank you so much for thank your you. story.